Hi guys, welcome to the Brad Penny channel and today we're going to be going through another balcony story and I'm going to be telling you guys about the time when I was a tech executive. This is around 2015 to 2016 and oh man, what a time, what a time it was to be alive. So unfortunately I don't have the actual device in the box to actually show you guys however follow me on my Instagram and Facebook and I will get those things because I left them uh, when I moved out of my parents house but I'll definitely go get them and I'll post it up for you you guys can see maybe even switch it on do a little bit of review if necessary but yeah it's all tech but yeah uh, I'll definitely show you guys the proof but for now let's get into the story once upon a time, I was part of a management team um, that was, you know, it was looking to create a tablet for the African market. So the Middle East Asia or Middle East A Africa, MEA, whatever, the neglected territories as they were known back in the day. So effectively that time what was happening was Nokia was closing. They had announced that you know they've done everything right but they still failed it was dramatic it was just unseen it was unforeseen and effectively you know nokia closed down and this was right after if you haven't watched my previous video about how i almost built a power station so after so how that chronologically ties with this video is that after the power station ordeal um one of the guys that I was working with there, he had other business interests and he you know, basically liked how we worked together and he offered me to say, hey, I'm actually working on this project. How about you assist me on that regard? And effectively, yeah, he was a guy who had dual citizenship, he's a South African, but he also lives in Finland. And while he was living in Finland for the past decade at that point, he made some friends and those friends were, you know, starting a startup company called Eve. And this company called Eve still exists today. They're still making tablets. I'm nowhere part of them today, but you know, we had some history together. The CEO is Konstantinos. I just forgot his surname, but yeah a little bit of reference for those who want to do some research and effectively yeah I was brought in into the project um, he liked you know my management style my business acumen all these things once again remember from that video whatever that happened there failure or success the knowledge the expertise is what you have to carry forward and that's where your next opportunity will draw from by how you basically did what you did how you you know basically how you you applied yourself and that's what's most important it's not about accomplishment it's not about failure it's not about success it's about what are you learning your journey is everything enjoy the journey right so yeah he took me up and he asked me to become the financial director of the business and the whole point was in finland the tablet they already had a, a, a prototype um, the prototype was, ugh, you know, so one thing you need to understand when you're dealing with tech All these devices that come out that you are buying <laughs> They are an iteration of so many failed models so many failed, you know Versions up until they got to an at least acceptable prototype or acceptable uh, you know value proposition slash product and effectively that's why today we are getting new devices every year because the minute one device goes out the next one is already in development and and so forth right so when i saw the first time i was really impressed i was like wow look at this you're talking about you know this was the rise of the phablet you know the big phones the big screen and sort of like multi-purpose use instead of just being a mere phone but how about we create a phone that can effectively replace a laptop <laughs> it was a very audacious plan but yeah during those times 2015 i mean i think also the app apple uh, tablet what, what was it called the iPad it was also just just you know was released and once again Steve Jobs really revolutionized the industry because nobody was necessarily talking about tablets at that point 
and when the iPad came out it was really it changed productivity the way it seemed and it's just unfortunate that Africa always lags behind in terms of these type of announcements or getting into the groove and effectively the technological providers or the manufacturers as it is they create devices for you know the, the users which was your European market your American market and when I got involved with the EVE project um, the tablet was really Eurocentric right at that point 3g was dinosaur technology for them yes 4g was still coming but 3g was the main thing used however at that time wi-fi was like the main thing you know uh, almost every city had you know connectable wi-fi in terms of just it being publicly available and mobile data usage was really just super low it was declining in terms of its usage and therefore the uh, the tablets that we were producing as a team then they were really just tablets that had no sim card and you just effectively connected it had only had wi-fi connectivity and we started to realize for us as the african division of this company to come on board and try to take the same tablet and bring it to south africa or africa it was a very big challenge because number one we needed some sort of offtake agreement we need an agreement whereby um you know uh, one of the big Telco, uh, telco companies would come on board when it's Vodacom, Salsi, MTN at that time for them to say okay guys we love your tablet how about a thousand orders or a hundred thousand orders or one million orders we needed that that was very important because now when you're producing tablets this is how it works you can have designers of which we got remember once again um Nokia was shutting down, so there were people being unemployed. So the nice thing about Constantino, uh, Const Constantina and the team there in Finland, what they did is they managed to secure a few, you know, key employees in terms of their advice and their knowledge, in terms of the, their know-how from Nokia, and effectively those guys helped give some design input, some advice, and all sorts of things, and. We got to a point where we were confident enough to build our first prototype based on the assistance and the knowledge from those guys. Um, it also just became, yeah, man, it was for me, I was very excited. I'm like, wow, I'm actually, you know, talking to people that know people from Nokia. I'm like, wow, Nokia was my first phone. So this was really an exciting time for me. So effectively, we had the design input. So the tablets were designed in Finland. However, for them to be produced, we had to produce them in China. And I don't know at that point, I just can't remember, but one of the manufacturing partners that we partnered with in China was Foxconn. And Foxconn is, even today, they are a big deal. So Foxconn, they are the biggest manufacturing business in the world, as far as I know. I mean, at Foxconn, I think the valuation of the company is a trillion dollars it could be more than that by now but this was in 2050 they were a trillion dollar company i don't know how much they are today i'll check i'll put it up on somewhere on the video right over here but foxconn was a trillion dollar business simply because they were the ones manufacturing your apple devices they were manufacturing or assembling yeah manufacturing you know um samsung devices they were also producing or outputting PlayStation 3s, PlayStation 4s, um, Xbox One, like all the major devices in your current household right now, it comes from Foxconn. And the production, you know, the, the, the labor market is so intense at Foxconn that there are employees literally living in the campus of the vicinity and one of the ways for us to get a production slot was for us to get what they called they had a name for it i just forgot but it's effectively we get in the production run of like the skeleton stuff or the stuff that works in the night like your 3 a.m like 4 a.m like those weird night those weird times of the night whereby possibility of mistakes could happen but obviously they try their best to quality assure but 
you know <clears throat> having employees work around the clock is really intense and there's many stories about foxconn that some people they work up until the the brink of death simply because they're trying to get paid for overtime they're trying to get you know additional cash and all those things and yeah foxconn is a machine guys like yeah you know, if you want to see what china is all about in terms of how they have you know transcended their business foxconn is one of those examples because they do everything they produce literally a majority of the world's you know premium and most recognizable technology foxconn that's where it comes in your devices right now foxconn google and check them out so we secured a production run at foxconn for our latest device because at that point we had a t1 prototype so we were looking to fully develop the t1 eve device and effectively what this was going to be was it's a it's a 13 inch tablet which had windows operating system but this was not windows mobile this was actual windows that you would get from your um you know on the, that you would find on your laptop or your desktop and at that point initially it had windows 8.1 and there was a lot of hoo-ha in terms of windows 10 windows 10 was coming you know e windows 8.1 was like a little bit on the flop side but it, you know people loved it for what it intended to achieve but it was not fully optimized and it did not deliver in full so at the end of the day windows 10 was the you know the next big thing so windows 10 coming in um, that next tablet was designed. It was one of the first tablets to have Windows 10 installed and this was confirmed because now at this point we were starting to have meetings with partners, technology, uh, te technology partners like we had a meeting with um, someone from, um, from Intel because uh, they were supplying us chips uh, for, the, for, the, for the tablet and yeah to bring it a little bit back is at this point i started off as the financial director but now because i was really managing the business i mean I've, i'm a tech guy initially like i mean as much as i love business and all these other finance related things my first love is really tech and at this point I've, i was fixing phones i was doing all sorts of things i was upgrading my phone i was i was just all about tech so obviously when i elevated to this level i I knew exactly what to do. I knew exactly, you know, I knew how to feel my way, even though I was not that, I was not technically trained, but I knew what was what. And <clears throat> this led me to the point to uh, my business partner promoting me to CEO. So I was CEO of Eve Africa. Once again, the African uh, version of the Africa project of Eve and yeah i was having meetings with the guys from finland having meetings with the manufacturer in in china having meetings with the guys from intel and some guys from microsoft as well and yeah i mean it was really it was really a bunker stuff once again um, i was having meetings with guys from microsoft south africa you know um, just basically talking with you know the i think i had a meeting with the chief technology officer the cto and the cio i think but definitely the cto um once again i'm not gonna name people guys i mean you can do your research if you find them you find them if you don't you don't but you know i'm just talking about my story and my experience and yeah i was having meetings with microsoft south africa about the tablet and how you know we were one of those companies or manufacturers um you know bringing this tablets that had a windows 10 which microsoft was very excited about and you know it was really a, a, a very nice time so yeah so effectively everything was looking good but now we had to secure funding we were busy yeah, we had to secure funding. Our devices were recognized and certified by ICASA. Um, this is now when the tablet was done. It's 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 now available um, in terms of from our side. So the only thing that we need to do, we have, I think at that time we had 30 um, sort of like demo models. So basically they were finished prototypes. However, we we're just really uh, uh, sending them out to be reviewed by you know technology youtubers um one of the most famous channels that i watch today that you know talked about this device is um 
what's his name unbox therapy lou from canada the youtuber from canada the tech youtuber from canada he reviewed the device so also some few youtubers in um spain and it was just really a multifaceted um, approach whereby we're like okay we're gonna access you know the next you know marketing strategy available which is really reviews you know and i was not really caught up in that but today i'm like oh wow we were so ahead of the times but you know it was so cool to just be part of that and yeah i mean it was reviewed then pre-orders were coming in but this was for england i mean for europe i mean i think yeah we hit a thousand pre-orders moving to ten thousand or so five thousand yeah the t1 was really a success at that time i mean it was a really good device and effectively we're moving to the point now we had to you know get into the african market but now we had a problem we're busy developing the t1 it was done wi-fi tablets windows 10 in it but now the issue was that we could not get into the african space because number one africa is lagging behind in terms of infrastructure 3g is the main thing everybody is excited about 3g in africa and therefore our tablets had to have a sim card or a sim tray so that you can install your sim card and effectively that was the message that we were getting from you know vodacom celsi at that point those were the two companies that were having active talks with in terms of but more so celsi i even met the, the chief marketing officer i forgot but I definitely met a top executive from uh, Celsi. We had some coffee and he loved the device. He was very excited about it. And oh man, it was so difficult because how can you be so close after so much investment? Because I mean, a lot of money has been pumped. I mean, it's not like you get a device for free for, for the production to output anything. You have to pay for that time. You have to pay for those components. and. You know, in England, I mean, in Europe, the nice thing is the pre-orders were coming through. Everybody was excited about the tablet. Our only problem was Africa and how the telcos were interested. I think we had initial orders of 100,000 units and we just couldn't fulfill that order. In fact, not even 100,000. I think from Vodacom, we had a, uh, an offer of like 2 million, 100 million to 2 million devices. But the condition was sim card tray now i thought that was easy <laughs> oh my gosh so to put in a sim card tray it was not simple because remember now that the oh come on <laughs> sorry guys my dad called me it's my birthday today hey it's my birthday so my dad called me like yeah my dad keeps forgetting my birthday i remember last year he literally put a car on my birthday and he forgot it was my birthday first subscribe and like this video that's my life but i'm sorry man. <laughs> i love my dad uh sorry to embarrass him like that but he forgot my birthday last year so he called now you know happy so like to the video guys so yeah um i don't remember where i was but i'm gonna try just to dive in so at this point device <clears throat> you know we're having orders from vodacom vodacom is saying hey just put the sim card tray and that's where i realized like hey the sim card tray business is not as easy you don't just say oh open the tablet put it in the thing is we had the circuit board you have all sorts of components the housing of the tablet for us to fit in a sim card tray many of those components had to be redesigned and to redesign that you know talking with the team and all the partners we had to have additional funding for you know to to in order to do exactly that and that was a serious herculean task to use the words of our finance minister and yeah it was very difficult and that's where the dream started to be like yeah this is becoming a nightmare because now to add that component it was costing us per component about 10 us dollars so 10 to to 30 us dollars in between because now it was a 3g component the good thing is 3g was old news and therefore it was cheap 
relatively speaking but it was not cheap to just literally practically install a sim card you know uh, component 4g was on the rise but now the issue in south africa there was no 4g infrastructure <laughs> so we were like um 3g 4g 3g 4g but effectively i was like now nah, we have to go for 3g and as much as we did go for it the problem is now we had an additional task of securing funding we went to idc we went to so many technology i mean funding options that were practically available then the main thing so now how we, the strategy there was okay let's get a letter of intent from one of the interested telco companies to say okay if you guys fulfill this we will buy x amount of devices and obviously that will give us the amount of money that you know the deal will be worth we could not secure that and that's where i started to realize that as a small business as much as everybody's encouraging you to dive in do business we will support you b corporates are literally not especially at that time there was i mean <clears throat> even at that time people were talking about csi people were talking about small businesses are the backbone of the economy this talk is not a null thing it's been being said and even then you know nobody was just interested and another thing is the education space was also on a drive to introduce tablets and as much as tablets were being introduced ours were not really considered because once again people had their people and we thought maybe we bring in this robust tablet because back then android was not the best android os is definitely not what it is today it was not as functional and our device was literally a, a laptop in your hands you know we, we were offering and mind you we were selling this device at 2500 i think that was the biggest price point and at one point for certain uh, you know businesses we were selling the tablet at one thousand one triple nine that was the the sweet spot deal obviously we're going to be making a loss but the you know the what we were intending is to really flood the market with the device so you can get at least some uh, you know some offtake agreements and that will fund the next production phase and you know if the interest is going up then we'll increase the price relatively so that was a strategy but it couldn't work because people once again in business if you don't have the right partners for whatever it is that you're doing nothing is going to happen yes your product could be really good but if it does not get support from the ecosystem you know because we were trying to enter the ecosystem of the tablet space and all that and this is why in my previous video when i was talking about the huawei x Tim, uh, video that this is where i learned of huawei how they were coming on and you know basically what they were doing and obviously the difference between them and us then was that they had funding they had so much money and guess what i found out found this out in hindsight but i later found out that the chinese government funded huawei in order to you know because this was, was what was happening um apple devices at one point were being manufactured in america but because in china you know manufacturers were literally copying the apple and basically making bootleg bootleg versions of the you know apple products and then apple effectively realized like this is hitting our sales let's go make an agreement with manufacturers in china that so we'll give you the schematics and instead of making fake versions of our products make original ones real ones and we'll cut you into the product into the you know we'll, we'll cut some of the profits for you or have a, a profit sharing <clears throat> sort of um, arrangement and that's effectively what saved apple or one of the things that saved apple I mean, apple's a good company but they had to do that because yeah and today many people are doing that that's why so much manufacturing is con is happening in china because people are like no don't copy here's part of the profits make originals let's be all happy instead of having a some sort of fake versus you know uh, original uh, product war but yeah china being china there's still people making uh, fake copies but at least majority is original so 
that's where I found out, okay, so China now is like, they were sort of trying to change how they were being viewed as, oh, China just copies American technology. Like, no, with Huawei, we are going to create something that is originally China. They're going to take, you know, this business and just push it. And that's what I learned. Like, why can't the South African government do the same thing? I wish they could have done the same thing with us because we were there. It's not like, I mean, I didn't have the president's, uh, 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 um, you know, phone and call them and say, hey, you know, we just didn't have that. But my main partner who introduced or who allowed me to be part of this, he was, he worked for Telcom and he knew the CEO then. I don't know if it was the current one. That didn't really help. <clears throat> it just helped in giving us insight. But once again, I mean, I don't know. It's so difficult to, to to push business. It's so difficult. And as much as people are encouraging everybody to be entrepreneurial, it's so difficult. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we just couldn't survive. As much as the potential is there, I wish we I had access to. I mean, today I know some funders and stuff. If 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 I was the guy that I was today, then wow, probably this company would have made it. I mean, since then there's been one or two, if not three, businesses that were, you know, that have gotten billions of rent in terms of funding. Um, many businesses spread up, and I feel like you know. Maybe we were early adopters, we came in too early. If we came at maybe a slightly different time, we would have uh, been able to participate. But effectively, that's what happened. And <clears throat> yeah, guys, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, so I left, eventually left the company and, you know, did my own thing. It was a great experience. I learned a lot. Um, it's not easy. Once again, business is not for the faint-hearted. If you want to survive in business, you need resilience. Uh, many companies that have gone through what we've gone through, they survive today, they are thriving today, and others have literally closed, like ours. <clears throat> but once again, it's about the journey, it's not about the destination. Um, as a business person, you do businesses and you fail, you succeed. The main thing is you need to act like you could fail anytime because the more you fail is the more you learn and you progress. You know, you basically progress, you know, as you fail because failure is the best teacher because whatever you fail in helps you to be successful in something else. And once you're successful, you want to make sure that you keep on pushing. Do not rest on the bosom of success. That is what will lead you to a Nokia situation because you're doing everything right. You have your reports, you have your profitability, you have all sorts of business jargon things going on, but technology innovation will shut you out because somebody is always coming behind you to pounce on the time when you're sleeping. So that's one of the things that you should learn. And yeah, that's basically my takeaway. I mean, it was a fun time. I really hope once again, balcony stories. I mean, just going to be telling you what I went through for you to extract some lessons. I really hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. Yeah. And thanks to everybody that has really supported me sharing the videos. Please guys share these videos and yeah, I'm trying my best to really just bring some valuable content. And yeah, guys, hope you learned something. See you on the next one.